Previously on One Life to Live. Are you trying to protect Lawrence's killer? If Vega thinks you did this, he'll leave it alone. If Troy wanted to cover up all these relationships and Lindsay found out about them, she could have blackmailed him. The only copy besides the cassette I gave you is on my computer. I'm on that tape with Troy. You can't tell him. The information you have, you feel it's vital to the case. As a cop, I do, yeah. As a cop? Aren't we here because you're conflicted personally about, about withholding information from the commissioner? I guess. And you won't tell me what this case is about? No. Well, if you're not going to give me any of the details, Antonio, I think we're kind of stuck here. But let me just say this to you. You withhold information from Bo Buchanan, it cannot be good for you. This isn't about what's good for me. Tell me, okay? You can tell me anything. Let me help you, okay? It's, it's about him. It's about Mitch. I, I can't hold this in any longer. No, please, please, Mom. Can you please not tell her, okay? It's fine. I'm okay. <clears throat> Mom. Hi, sweetheart. Boy, you were right about what the voice of the night said on the radio. Jessica? Honey? What's wrong? Uh, I was, um... I was just a little overwhelmed <laughs> with everything that's been going on, and, um, I just came by to talk to Joey, and I feel so much better now. Honey, are you really okay? I'm fine, I'm fine. Hey, didn't you go to check on that vandalism thing on campus? Yes, I did. The report turned out to be accurate. Little Marcy Walsh, you know her? She hung a peace banner outside her dorm room window. When she went out, some students came in, ripped down the banner, and totally trashed her dorm room. They have some kind of, what, some kind of aversion to peace? Apparently. I guess freedom of speech doesn't apply if we have troops overseas. But you know something what's far worse than this sort of mindless approach of a few students is the absolutely imbecilic approach of the college administration. You know, I am really impressed with how well you're dealing with all of this. You mean with growing impulse and panic and the impulse to run for my life? No, I mean the way you're refusing to let these thugs intimidate you. You know, they're, they're not going to try anything else. Not when the voice of the night has my back. Besides, they're probably just a bunch of drunk frat guys. All the same. I'd feel a lot better if you weren't alone tonight. I know. I asked you back here tonight, too. Marcy, to... all I care about is making sure that you're safe. Did I mention that you're my hero? Honey, what are you doing out of bed? A friend of mine wanted me to go over his new design collection. Oh. <laughs> well, can I see what the lady I love is going to be wearing next year? Uh, 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 uh. For my eyes only. I promised him. Hmm. I mean, not that I think you're going to take the industry secrets and give them to Armani, but... I love your integrity. <laughs> is this what's uh, taking you out of town? Well, if... Uh... I don't know. I may not have to make that trip after all. If you get to stay home, I'm going to fall in love with uh, the digital era here. <laughs> I will be right back to bed like that. Okay. <laughs> and I'll be waiting for you. <laughs> I'm just 
here to pick up Christian's check and his work schedule. Nora, hi. hi. He's all here. Uh, you wouldn't happen to know where Troy McIver is, would you? Well, I, I don't know why he would be here. Hmm, try the controlled medicines cabinet. What? I'm, yeah, I'm sorry, that was really tacky, and Christian would kill me if I said anything. Chris. I believe he's no proof. Proof of what? Well, um, on one of his shifts, he noticed that Dr. MacGyver was acting really weird. Weird how? Nice one minute and total jerk in the next. And then Christian saw Dr. MacGyver going and taking a bottle of pills out of the medicine cabinet without signing for it. The locked drug cabinet? Really? Yeah. Uh, Christian just wondered if maybe uh, Dr. MacGyver was getting the pills, you know, what's it called, um, that mood-altering stuff. Yeah, wasn't it? Maybe it's not his mood he was trying to alter. Jen? Jen? Mom? Are you here? Are you real? You came to get me. You came to get me. No, Mom, I'm sorry. Troy locked me in here, too. We're never gonna get out. She only sells me cigars. Don't you know by now that you are the only man for me? Good. Mm. Then come with me to the Casbah. But wait, let, let's unplug this thing so we don't get it interrupted. No, no, no. Let the machine pick it up. All right? And if there's another hang-up on there, I'm going to abuse my power. I'm going to put all the police resources into finding this creep. And then I'm going to haul his butt in. How about that? Come on, let's go. Natalie, what else did Christian say about um, Dr. MacGyver's behavior that day? Just that he noticed that Dr. MacGyver had laid into one of his nurses that he dated. Any idea who that might be? Mm-mm. No, but uh, Christian did say that all the nurses call uh, Dr. MacGyver Jekyll and Hyde. <laughs> anyway, Christian's gonna be calling me tonight from New York, and I gotta get out of here. I don't wanna miss it. See ya. Hey. Thanks, Hi. Natalie. Nora, you know that Troy's been fired by the hospital. No, I didn't. Well, several of the female staff members filed complaints against him, and all of those women Troy could or would consider subordinates. Not that I can't guess, but what were the complaints? Each one of them was the same. Mm -hmm. He sweet-talked them, seduced them, and then walk out the door. Did anyone talk to him? I did, believe it or not. Informally, of course, but nothing changed, and the hospital had to let him go. Well, actually, I happened to see a fallout of one of his hit-and-run dates. A nurse was complaining to Claire Baxter about um, what he had done to her, and she said it's what he always does. Yeah, right. The Claire Baxter that we it's all located. Right. We all know that you found Claire's body. Everybody's very shaken up about it. Well, yeah. if Dr. McIver's capable of treating women like that, and maybe he murdered Claire Baxter, and shouldn't we be looking at him for the disappearance of Lindsay Rappaport? 
Jen. Hi. It's me. I, um... I thought I could call you on your cell, because Rex wouldn't check that. I, um... I don't know. I just wanted to call and say goodnight again. And, um... I miss you. I love you. I don't know what I was thinking when I made that tape. I mean, I wasn't thinking. I never think, and then, and then I do these crazy things, and now I end up in a place like this. No, no, it's not true. It's not that way at all. Then how come, how come I got us into this mess? It isn't your fault. I really did believe that Troy loved me. I really believed we were going to have a life together, and you got caught up in my madness. But I am not going to let anything else bad happen to you Mom, here. This is a nightmare. You're not listening to me. I am not going to let anyone hurt you. I am getting you out of here. I don't like this, Colin. There'll be questions. Yeah, well, make sure there aren't. How do I explain to my staff? <sighs> maybe you don't have to. He lost me. Well, maybe there'll be an, an unfortunate incident in which one of your more violent patients gets loose, wanders into another room, and... Well, bad things happen. The doors are locked. We're never gonna get out. It's impossible. Shh. Come on, come on, let's just think about this. I can't take this. I can't take this. I have to get out of here. Get ahead of yourself. You can't think like that. Do you understand? Okay, come on. Come here. Put your head in my lap. Come on. Come on. Hey, you remember... Remember the time that we got caught in the elevator in Daddy's building? Of course you don't. You were pretty young back then. It was a brownout. You said everything would be okay, and then you sang to me. You remember that? I don't remember feeling scared. I remember how safe you made me feel. Do you remember that I told you that someone would come and find us, and they did? And that's what's gonna happen this time. Someone's gonna come and find us. Was it a lullaby? Beautiful dreamer, wake up to me. Sunlight and dew drops are waiting for thee. Sounds of the root world heard in the day lulled by the moonlight have all passed away lulled by the moonlight have all passed away That's fine. Thank you very much. Yeah. I apologize for the interruption. No problem. What a wonderful view. I love a summer garden and a lovely day like today, don't you? Yes. Now, Dean Baker, regarding this attack on... on uh, Marcy Walsh's dorm room... Miss Davidson, Madam President, this was only a foolish prank. A foolish prank? Breaking and entering, destruction of property? Dean Baker, those are crimes. And according to Marcy, you prevented her from filing a police report and all but ordered her not to hang another banner. Well, doing so could provoke another act of vandalism. Uh, I see. Not consistent with that logic, the schools should never have been integrated in the 1950s because doing so might have provoked another incident of racial intolerance. Madam President, this is a university. It is basically a community of students. And they have no rights. Hmm? The university has conducted its own investigation. There's nothing more to be learned about the incident. So the matter is ended. No, I'm sorry, Dean Baker. The matter is just beginning. Interview Police Department. 
<laughs> hey, did you see all the peace signs and banners all over campus? I guess they heard the voice of the night. Here's the long and the short of it, Antonio. Unless you give me a damn good reason not to, I'm pulling you off the Lawrence investigation. And that includes a break-in down in the evidence room. Sounds like your mind's already made up. When I questioned you about taking that evidence, you made no effort to defend yourself. All right, let's try this. Lindsay Rappaport is missing, along with all of the evidence in the Mitch Lawrence murder investigation, in which she happens to be the prime suspect. You think she was the one who broke in and stole it? No, I don't. But somebody sure as hell did. Official, you just pulled the plug of the grand jury. Who did this? The forensics evidence that's missing includes Lawrence's personal effects, including the Badra diamond. The di Well, is it possible that someone stole the evidence just to cover the fact that they were really after the diamond? Not really. But it is a possibility. I think it's more likely that whoever took the evidence was trying to cover for Lawrence's killer. Or it was the killer himself. Or herself. Joey. Jess, hey. You left so quick last night. I know, it's just you're the only person that I can talk to about Mitch's death. Hi. Uh, what, what about Mitch's death? Oh, okay, yeah. Well, I just came over to help Joey get his place looking like the third millennium, but I definitely think I should go. Natalie, uh, wait, I... Listen, I've just been, um, just been really difficult for me to, to, to deal with what, what went on between Mitch and I, and, um... I mean, um... You feeling guilty about those thoughts? He was my father, and I, and I wanted him dead. Listen. Wanting or wishing didn't make anything happen, okay? This is a process. You were traumatized beyond belief. Okay, it's not gonna just go away like that. Right, yeah. I know. Hey, I'm here for you. Anytime you need me, okay? You know that, right? And if not me, maybe you should talk to someone like uh, Ray Cummings. Yeah. Yeah, maybe that's a good idea. You know what? There's a lot of stuff in the garage that maybe we could make Joey's place look a little better. So why don't we go take a look? About. Talking about how she never came home last night, so she's got to be here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey! Mom? Hey, honey. Guess what? I think I found a way for us to get out of here. I crashed at Ultraviolet last night. When I came home this morning, I saw that Jen hadn't come home. And you weren't worried that, about that at all? Well, considering everything, I figured she was over here in the sack with her minister. You don't know anything. I know what you'll learn. She'll come back when she's had enough of you. calling you about. Oh, Nora. Well, obviously you haven't heard from Jen either. No. Well, when you do, will you have her give me a call, please? Nora, that's the problem. Nobody's seen her. I'm really worried. When was the last time you saw her? <clears throat> last night. But I, I thought she went home, but she never showed up there. Uh, let me talk to Bo and I'll get back to you. Thanks. 
What do you mean there's nothing behind there? I'm saying there's nothing but concrete behind the grill. But this is how Allison and I got out of Statesville. I thought for sure. Probably why they sealed the vents. We're never going to get out of here. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. There shouldn't be two patients in here. No, no, there aren't. But I was kidnapped and I was brought here. Just like my mom. Call Commissioner Buchanan. I I'm Jen Rappaport. I live in Landview. Or call Nora Buchanan. Just they'll tell you I'm not crazy. I'm not supposed to be here. It's okay, okay Miss Philpott. These women are mother and daughter, but they're... The girls live their entire life in a disassociated environment with her psychotic mother. No, no, that's not true. The two of them have been in and out of institutions uh, with absolutely no success whatsoever. What if we treat them simultaneously, get the mother to accept reality, maybe the daughter will follow through. That is a lie. That's she that's was not raised in a house with her father and me. We don't belong in here. They all say they don't belong in here. Mm -hmm. But poor things, they certainly don't belong out there. Wait, wait, don't leave us! You, know what, you don't have to talk to me, all right? But look what it's doing to you, all right? You have got to get this out. That is the only way it's gonna heal. It's not gonna heal! <laughs> Ow! All right. I'm not saying that it's not gonna scar. But it will heal. You know, you've got to talk to someone. And if it can't be me or Joey, then maybe Reverend Carpenter. I mean, he's he's helped you in the past. Or Mom. I mean, you guys are so close. Maybe there is somebody I need to talk to. Look, maybe Jen found Lindsay and went to get her. Or maybe the plan was always for them to meet up. No, no. She was absolutely too worried about Lindsay. She had no idea where she was. Come in. Hi. I got a bunch of your messages. Yes. Where were you between um, yesterday afternoon and right now? Yesterday afternoon? Uh... I was with you, right? I was speaking with you, Nora. After that. Uh, after that? Um, well, I, 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 well, I stopped by the palace for a drink, and then I went home. Uh, then I actually, well, I got a little restless, and I, I went out and I checked out Ultraviolet just to see what it was like. You talked to anyone there? Um, sure. Uh, R.J. Gannon. What's this all about? Claire Baxter was murdered. Oh, my God. Do you know who did it? We intend to find out. Well, I mean, if there's anything that I can do to help you out, I'll contact you right away. Thank you, Doctor. <sighs> I trust Nora's instincts, as far as Troy is concerned. And he was connected to the uh, victim. But I don't think that he killed Mitch Lawrence. And without the evidence, that means that that killer is going to walk. What do you want me to say? Antonio, you know a lot more than you've told me. Now, is there anything you'd like to add? No. See any good movies lately? I'm sorry I had to cancel breakfast, okay? Please tell me you've talked to Bo. You talked to him, right? I can't, Nora. Oh, what do you mean you can't? I can't avoid this any longer, Gabrielle. When Jen comes in with the computer, I gotta show him the tape. Well, that isn't gonna be possible now because you see, I got a hold of her laptop. Please what don't do ask me how I got a hold of it. What did you do? What did you do? Please don't tell me you deleted those files. I had to delete them. 
Oh, Miss Osborne, what's the matter with you? Are you out of your mind? Me on the evidence from the homicide. He may have murdered a woman. We don't know what else he could do. You said on the phone that you had a way to stop him. What does it matter? That's why I deleted it all night. I'm not so sure now. Well, what was your plan? I'm just going to follow the videotape. Wire up a female officer and let her sidle up next to him and hope that he slipped something, for goodness sake. But, you know, there are no guarantees of that. There's no guarantee he'll take the bait. There's no guarantee that he'll say anything, for weeks even. I should have you arrested for obstructing justice, but then I'd have to explain Sorry. that to Bo. Sorry. But look, I, I could move this along faster. I could help us out here. Because <laughs> you've done such a good job of it so far. How? How could you have done that? Hmm? I could be the decoy. Miss Davidson, please do not make this your first stand as university president. I'm not going to ignore it just because it's inconvenient. You will draw a great deal of negative attention, hard on the heels of the drug problem, which was a public relations nightmare. We certainly don't want another episode like that. Dean, I appreciate your concern for the reputation of the university. Truly, I do. But I don't think you understand what I'm talking about. What happens to these students while they are on our campus really affects their entire lives. So what exactly are we teaching them? that it's all right to condone criminal behavior as, as a means of settling a disagreement? Shouldn't we rather enforce freedom of speech? As it is one of the essential components that this country was founded on. This is not just something in a textbook. This is real and it matters and it is something that every single student should stand up for. But more bad publicity. We are in the middle of a $100 million capital campaign. I am well aware of that. And it seems to me that people will be more inclined to give when they realize that we are upholding the Constitution of the United States. Now, whoever trashed Marcy's room committed an act that is a crime in every state in this country. We are not going to be an exception. So I want the person found and taken before the police commissioner for a little chat. And then Commissioner Buchanan can decide how to proceed. Are we clear, Dean Baker? We are clear, Ms. Davidson. Hey, I think I took a wrong turn. I'm trying to renew my driver's license. Yeah, it's the building across the street. <laughs> Just goes to show you that people would rather spend the day in jail than spend the day at the DMV. <laughs> hey, you know what? You guys were great at Ultraviolet the other night. Oh, thank you. Hey, are you the one putting up the peace signs around campus? Yeah. No, no, well. it's great. You haven't been by the uh, garage today, have you? No, why? Well, we put up a huge banner, big peace sign. <laughs> Get out. That's so cool. <laughs> This is your last chance, Antonio. Do you have information about the Lawrence evidence that was stolen? Did you steal the evidence? Antonio, you could at least deny that you stole it. Damn. You give me no choice but to assume that you did steal it. And that gives me no choice but to suspend you from the force. I just got married. Congratulations. Thanks. But, well, here's the other thing. I really love my wife. And I want to stay married to her forever. But she cheated on me. Oh. And it's causing me a lot of uh, pain, you know? Emotional anguish. A lot. So, what do you think? I think your lawyer advised you to see a therapist to validate your position as a devoted husband. You see, in that way, it strengthens your refusal to grant a divorce to your unfaithful wife. I mean, that is what you meant when you asked me what I think, isn't it? Uh, um... Right. Therapist. Okay. 
that being said, I think you will have emotional anguish. I mean, assuming that the rest of the story is true. And uh, I also think you are genuinely upset because your wife slept with somebody else. So now, if you would like to investigate that, find out if your pain is about love or about ego, call this person. See if he can fit you in. Hey there, Joe. Hey. How are things at the community center? Not bad. How are things with you? I'm doing fine. Hey, that young woman you were counseling, the one from the center, I'm really sorry. I know it's always a blow when they spiral down like that. What do you mean? Well, I was at Felicity Hills Sanitarium, and I caught a glimpse of someone. I'm pretty sure it was her. Perhaps I was wrong. The good-looking blonde woman? OK, where is this place? You took care of those patients? It's in the works now. Yeah, well, it better be. Because if this doesn't pan out, I'm going to make sure that you lose everything. It's all under control, Colin. You've done very well these past few weeks, Mr. Howell. Perhaps you'd enjoy a little extra freedom today as a reward. Let me just check your file. The last time I saw you, I wasn't doing so well. Did you tell me that you were in love with someone? Yeah. Joe Buchanan. Now I'm never going to see him again. Don't you say that. <sighs> Having someone to go home for, that's... that's what's going to get you out of this place. Stairs. What? Yes? How may I help you? I think a friend of mine is here. Her name is Jennifer Rappaport. Who are you? What do you want? Take care of you. <clears throat> You're being especially helpful today. Not that you aren't always, but uh, everything okay? Well, I guess it makes me a lot less virtuous if I admit that I'm keeping myself busy because I really miss Christian. No, it doesn't. Happens to be a family trait. I've done it all my life. <sighs> I know you helped Joey earlier, too. Wish I could help Jessica. Why? What's wrong? I don't know. I don't know. She just... She's definitely fighting something. I think she is, too. But, I mean, I keep telling myself it has to do with everything that she went through with Mitch. Yeah, I mean, that's probably a lot of it. What's the rest of it? When we thought Mitch died going out through that theater window, this seems even worse. Okay. 
What could possibly be worse than feeling responsible for somebody else's death? Nora, um, is Hi. Antonio here? Uh, he's actually in with Bo. Six legs. I should be using a trained officer, not a civilian. No, no, you said it yourself that an officer just can't get close to Troy the way I apparently can. I'm telling Bo. No, 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 Nora. Good Lord, please don't. We've come this far. Please let me redeem myself. This is wrong. I don't like it. Please. I'll be in the truck. Okay. There will be cops all around. This could go very wrong, very fast. Mm -hmm. Troy is unpredictable. We, as far as we know, he may have murdered one woman. Do not make me go to Bo and have to tell him. No, 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 no. I, I, I understand. Whatever had happened with Claire, clearly Troy came out of control. But I don't plan on letting it get anywhere near that point. Don't leave the restaurant with him. I won't leave the restaurant. I mean it. Promise me. You're not going to leave the restaurant with him. I won't. Ready? Yeah. One life to live. I'm not going to stand by and watch you throw your job away. It could be dangerous. I'm aware of the risks. I think I found Jen and Lindsay. Are you threatening a hostile takeover, Kevin? If your marriage means anything to you at all, you'll come to land you quick. Hi, this is Linda Dano, and I love playing Felicia on Another World. I'm so thrilled SoapNet is taking us back to Bay City. Every weekday, turn on SoapNet and return to another world. SoapNet, pure soap 24-7, the new way to watch soaps. <laughs>